Look, we're living in a data world, right? And so we want to help people leverage the power of data. And in particular, uh, we want to help people find more of the people they're looking for. Welcome to Uptech Report. This is our Applied Tech series. Uptech Report is sponsored by TerraLeap. Learn how to leverage the power of video at TerraLeap.io. Today, I am joined by my guest, Franz Huang, who's based in Colorado, co-founder and chief strategy officer at Boodle.ai. Welcome, Franz. Good to have you on. Hey, great to be here, Alexander. So your product is a people-focused predictive analytics platform. So for those out there, if you're maybe a nonprofit fundraiser, a VP of sales, head of marketing, or maybe political giving campaign, anyone really around raising money or increasing sales from people, this might be an intriguing platform you might want to check out. Now, friends, on your site, you state it's data science, not rocket science. Very catchy title. I like that. Tell me, though, what was the problem you guys initially saw and, and set out to solve? Yeah, so look, we're living in a data world, right? And so we wanted to help people leverage the power of data. And in particular, uh, we wanted to help people find more of the people they're looking for. And so the problem we're trying to solve, you know, every organization that is trying to increase money, increase sales, raise money, there's a problem they almost all have, which is where do I devote my advertising or sales or fundraising dollars? And most importantly, time. And so what we do is we help organizations make predictions about what people are going to do in the future based on the data they already have. And so that's why we built a platform and that's why we built a company. This whole idea of applying data science and, and then really, I guess, machine learning or this concept of how do you look at a lot of, a lot of data and come with uh, answers, um, it's not necessarily new, but it's applying it maybe in a new way. So help me understand, like, what, what are people doing before they say, oh, let's use your, my, that platform, that's cool, what is that? But what are they doing before that? Yeah, so this is obviously a problem a lot of people are trying to solve and a lot of people are solving already. So, you know, what makes us different? So to do good machine learning, AI, data science, right? You need data, you need algorithms, you need computing power, and you need the code that pulls it all together. Um, the big sticking point for a lot of people is the data, right? Their data they have is either incomplete or inaccurate, or they just don't have enough of it. And so one of the things that differentiates us is we have built a very powerful engine that takes the data that people already have, just names and emails, names and phone numbers, names and mailing addresses, and we're able to identify who those people are in the real world, which allows us to bring in hundreds of data points about those individuals into our system. So we complete the data picture. So basically, all, all someone needs to provide is an email address or, and a name, and then you provide all the other data points. Correct. Into our system. And so we solve the data problem for organizations that don't have the data necessary to do good predictive analytics. Because a lot of there are a lot of great algorithms out there you can use to to run this data science, but you have to provide all the data itself. So that's one of the nice simplicity parts of, of your platform. Yeah. So we, we solve the data part. The other part is, you know, then there are a lot of great tools out there. And in fact, you can code it yourself, right? I mean, it's not that difficult. But bringing it all together and creating a platform that in four or five clicks, you can bring in your data, marry it up with this other data set and, and create and test a model and deploy it all in an easy you know, platform. That's the trick, right? So it's not getting from point A to point B, it's getting from point A to point B you know, in style, comfortably, right, and quickly. So that's what we provide. I, I like that in, in style and, and quicker. Because I mean, the, the folks that are, are using your platform and you're targeting, are the VP of sales, head of marketing, you meant, we were talking about earlier, those people aren't data scientists necessarily. They haven't trained in that skill set. So the idea of having to learn new algorithms and have to, to churn all this, is, do they have to know the skill set to be able to use your platform? Absolutely not. And that's, that is part of what we're trying to solve. So uh, while we're data geeks, we love data science, we love data, we love getting into it, right? Um, our customers, uh, they made feel that same way about data, but really at the end of the day, they just want to increase their sales, right? They want to increase their fundraising. They want to find more of their people that look like their best customers or donors. And so they want to get to their answer quickly. And so what we, we, we solve all the messy problems of bringing in the data, you know, tying it up together, creating and testing the models. And so what they get back 
is actionable information. They, you know, they just wanted a question. They ask us a very simple question. Who should I ask for more money or who should I ask to be my next customer? And we provide that answer and we, we take the data they have and solve all the other problems, which would normally take a team of data scientists to do, frankly. And so, you know, I, I will tell you a quick story, Alexander. You know, we have had a number of customers that come to us that have their own data science teams. And it's been quite validating because when they say, look, this is what we do internally, and they talk through their process, it's identical to what we do for our customers. The difference is they have a team of four or five data scientists, a half million dollar budget. The process takes a couple of weeks. They're doing custom coding. Instead, you know, in a SaaS platform, we're delivering the same output to our customers without them having to do that massive investment that would otherwise be required. It's fascinating that effectively an AI tool playing the data scientist role. Now, where's the data scientist is going to go? But I'm sure there's still a need for them. It's just for really the smaller businesses that don't necessarily have the data scientists in-house or are ready for that scale, this is a good platform. Tell me, I understand those some use cases. Maybe you can walk through one of your um, clients, a case study of how it's helped someone in particular. Sure. We do work with both um, commercial and non-commercial clients. So I'll give you an example of both. So for example, we um, have a number of nonprofit uh, partners that we work with and, you know, they will have a huge data set of donors and they will ask us, you know, I want to find more donors that look like my best donors now. And I don't want to spam the entire universe of people on my list. You know, I would rather only ask those people for more money that are most likely to give and frankly want to hear from me. And so they will write us a list of their, of their donors. Um, their best donors, we will use that list to build and then test and validate a model that can find who else looks like those best donors. And then we apply that model to maybe the rest of their donor database or maybe their, their email list. And we tell them, look, out of these 10,000 other people you could ask, here's the thousand that really you should spend your time and effort on. And what's great about that is then their fundraisers can talk to a thousand people and not 10,000 people, right? And now we don't have 10,000 people receiving a message, we have 1,000. So I think it's a win-win for both sides. Um, on the commercial side, the problem is oftentimes a, is similar, but a little different in the sense of um, for our commercial customers, they're often having to deal with the problem of lead flow. Like I have 100,000 prospects a month, but my salespeople can only talk to 10,000. Yeah, which, there's no way we can go through 100,000. How can I do it faster, basically? How right. can I look at it? Yeah, which 10,000 should I talk to? Right. And so we help identify the best 10,000. And so we have one customer where they literally had 100,000 leads in a two month period. Um, we identified the best 40 percent, the best 40,000. And, you know, we kind of break down the leads into A, B, C's and D's, the A's being the best, the D's being the worst. Well, the A's actually converted, became customers at a rate five times better than the D's. And so clearly, right, that has an effect on the data proves it point business. that, that if, you're, you, if your time is spent on the right people, uh, then it, you're going to get a lot better results. So it's better time. I'm curious, though, like at what point does like how many leads? What's the numbers that make sense to have to use a platform like yours where like if someone's only getting 100 leads a month, yeah. I mean, they could just manually do it themselves. So where is the tipping point that it makes sense to use a platform like this? Yeah, so we are, um, you know, we pride ourselves on being able to serve a variety of customers. Um, and, you know, it really depends on the organization. You know, you need to have a, a lead prioritization problem or a customer segmentation problem. And one where solving that problem produces a return on investment that makes sense for you, right? You obviously don't want to spend tens of thousands of dollars on a platform where you only are making, a, you know, a couple thousand dollars back. So I think there is necessarily, um, you know, a point where it makes sense and one it doesn't. But, but that's why we also, besides the platform, we have a dedicated customer success team. And so this is AI as a service. This is really cutting edge stuff. A lot of organizations don't know how to deploy and implement these kind of data science. You need some models. handholding to, to go through it. You're, you're not alone, basically. You're, you're not alone. And we certainly wouldn't expect someone to buy a platform like this and just kind of go off to the races on their own, right? So we, you know, we give you a beautiful car to get from point A to point B. We also give you you know, uh, a co-pilot and a, you know, somebody sitting in the air service <laughs> yes. as, as needed to, to help you along. I, I like, I like it's, I think we're in an age of both um, SaaS as a platform to be able to, to, to use, but services alongside so that as you move forward, you're not doing it, it by, by yourself, unless you can do it, unless you, you got it. Uh, yeah. 
And I will have to say, Alexander, we do have uh, customers that are pretty, you know, very knowledgeable, in fact, about data science, and they could do everything the platform does on their own. They choose to use the platform anyways, because again, right, even though you can build your own car, if somebody's already built a beautiful car, you might as well ride in it. And so they right. use our platform um, internally uh, to do the same type of modeling they would otherwise do manually, but we do it faster, we do it um cheaper, right? And, and in some cases, we get better results. And if nothing else, because you can iterate fast, right? We, right. You know, we, had, a, we had a customer that uh, there was a data set they'd worked on for a couple of weeks to provide um, a useful model internally. We took the same data set and we provided a model back in 45 minutes, right? <laughs> and so they were, they were like, look, even you know, the model's great, but really the turnaround, right? The ability to like iterate quickly is incredibly valuable. So you're saying you could simply upload uh, a, a set of data, a list of, of people, and within 45 minutes, you could have back, here's the people you should be paying attention to. Absolutely. Okay. Now, this leads, though, to another point you said, like, even people who know what they're doing. As far as integrations or expandability, if someone has a data scientist or, or someone who really is into this, um, know the knowledge of how to make it work, is there, like, a, a back end or is there a way to integrate if they want to do more? Or is it still a, a, a closed system? And if they need to go beyond, they need to go outside. Yeah, so one of the great things about being a startup um, and being agile, uh, literally, uh, is we're always on the lookout for how to grow the platform in a way that adds value to our customers. And so all the customer, all the developments on a platform have been driven by customer requests and, and needs. And so, you know, we, we do a new release every two weeks. And so, you know, we're built on a microservices architecture. We have had customers ask for uh, things that didn't exist in the platform. We were able to quickly iterate and, and release them. And this idea of like integrating more closely with, you know, customer systems is certainly something we're open to. Got it. It's, it's nice. To, to have that type of mentality and approach that, hey, if I want an idea, I know that you guys are listening and you you can can add to it. Um, taking a slight uh, pivot here, for, for whether it's these VP of sales or marketing or, or f fundraising, um, in the role that they are in, their job, aside from your platform, if you were to give any advice to what they have to do in their daily work and activities, what kind of advice or, 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 or tips or insight would, would you share with them? Yeah, so I think it would be the same advice that I tell my own team, right? Which is at the end of the day, listen to your customers. Like it's the ground truth. You know, I think one of the, uh, you know, I, I've been on multiple founding teams, um, been with multiple companies. Uh, I think one of the reasons why the teams I've been a part of had had success is we stay very humble and we don't fall in love with our own ideas and we don't fall in love with what we think is supposed to happen. We look at what's really happening. And so, I may come up with the best marketing campaign. I may come up with the best product idea, but if the customers don't like it, then it doesn't matter, right? And so I think whether you're raising money for a nonprofit or you're creating uh, camp marketing campaigns for your direct to consumer business, you know, always going back to what does the customer want? What does the customer need? And most importantly, what is the customer telling me? That's, that's powerful. Always. It's good to listen to the customer. Yeah, it's always, it's always a good, good idea. Uh, for, for Boodle, looking forward here, uh, what can you share of your roadmaps, uh, what you're excited about upcoming, and where are you guys headed? Yeah, so our next thing that we're kind of the next iteration of the platform, while we built this very powerful people-focused predictive analytics engine that answers the question of who should I talk to next, uh, we've come to realize that that's important, but not complete part of the equation. And so the next set of questions we're answering is, where, when, and what. And so this idea of what we call transaction analytics, which is not just analyzing people's customer databases or donor databases, but looking at the entire set of order histories, all the transactions and being able to identify where are sales trending or where is fundraising trending and who and what is trending and maybe answer why and then tie that back into the who. And I think that idea of transaction analytics combined with people-focused predictive analytics will unlock even more value for our customers. Well, I'm excited to then see as you guys move in that direction, we'll have to do another interview to hear more about that. Um, and you guys are around 2018 is when you started. So it's, it's like several years in the play. For those who want to hear more about the journey, though, stick around for part two of our discussion, uh, where we're going to dig, dive a little bit more deeper into the journey. 
that you have been on and the insights that you've gathered. So stay tuned for part two of our discussion. For those that want to learn more, though, go to boodle.ai. That's B-O-O-O-D-L-E dot A-I. And you'll be able to request a demo, right? They can check it out. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and take it for a spin. Thanks again for joining us on today's Uptech episode. We'll see you next time. Have you seen a company using AI, machine learning, or other technology to transform the way we live, work, and do business? Go to uptechreport.com and let us know. Thank you.